I'm Max Sterling, welcome to LARPgasm. I had been trying to figure out what to do with that other shoulder pad on my armor for Dystopia Rising. Now the one shoulder I have the license plate and it looks good, but like I said I want it to be asymmetrical. Usually I like to have something large and prominent on one side, but that gets tricky uh, keeping it safe. If you're doing photo shoots and cosplay and stuff, you can kind of do whatever the hell you want, but when you're talking about LARP, it's got to be safe. You can't be banging yourself in the head with shit, so you got to really sort of be mindful of that. So putting bolts or spark plugs or something sticking up out of it, and then, you know, swinging wild and having that thing come up and, you know, jam my head, it's just not good for business. So I decided, since I'm a sports theme character, using a football for that would be great. I'd initially wanted to do a tire, but the tire's not really keeping with the theme of the character, but a football is. So, I went out and I got myself a football. I could not find just like a shitty, dirty, used old football. Like I said, I'm not a sports person. I think I may have a football somewhere from when I was a child, but it's like a weird Nerf one and it's like red or blue or something. So I needed a real football. I found this one. It's actually for the home team. Uh, yeah, it's got a logo on it. And uh, yeah, I don't even want to talk about how much this cost, but I got it. And it comes with a kicking tee. Oh boy. I don't think I'll be using that though. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. And uh, so we got a football here. Um, what I'm gonna do is cut this thing open. And I'm going to use, I think this part of it, laces out, Finkel. Um, and I'm gonna make that the other shoulder pad. So if you can kind of imagine here on the armor, that'll be the shoulder pad. Don't wanna to show too much of the armor here. That'll be later. But um, that's the plan. So this is still a newer style, so I can't just like pull threads out, but it's a good enough football that it's actually leather and uh, I should be able to cut it just right along the line here. Um, luckily, it's already deflated a little bit um, and that's good. So I'll be able to use it. I don't think that, Uh, I don't think this kicking tees will be good for anything. I'll uh, set it there and keep screws in it or bolts in it or something. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much where I'm at. So get this cut and uh, get it on there. All right, well, those of you that didn't know what the inside of an American football looks like, there it is, so. I guess I can pump that up and use it. <laughs> so, there we go. Now, I'm only gonna need maybe half of this, so. There we go. So, I got a brain helmet, and I got my <laughs> pauldron, so. That's gonna work. That's gonna work real nice. It's gonna be weird as hell, because, uh, <laughs> is not something that you really ever see. But I think it'll be very cool. And I still got a half a football to display. All right, so you'll see it when it's all done, but that's gonna be my shoulder piece. So let me get to work. Okay, so you ask me what I'm doing for arms and legs. Well, the short story is my arms are gonna be covered, so I'm gonna wear probably just my regular medieval uh, bracers or I'm gonna wear some youth shin guards because they're gonna be completely covered by my costume. So they, nothing really needs to happen to them. I can just leave them as they are and they are like a plate armor. 
for legs, I had to modify an old set of uh, shin guards I had that I used to have fur wrapped around. But what I did was I took and just bolted license plate onto. So when I wear them, there's license plate. Took the time, hit it with blowtorch, hit it with my shredder, got some spray paint on it, and uh, painted the rest of it, you know, to be silver. I will try to do some additional work on that, maybe add some additional stuff onto it, uh, just to further uh, genre it. But if time runs out, at least I have that and it's looking good. For a bottom, I decided to go with blue jeans. I actually had to go out and buy a pair of jeans specifically for this. Um, I had a pair I was working on and literally I have no idea where I put them. So that's my bad. So I had to start all over again. So I'm basically just bleaching them. I'm going to hit them with the shredder a little bit, spray paint them a little bit, and then that'll be it. And then of course I'll have my upper armor, which is really the main focal point. And as far as a helmet, well, check this out. So while I've been working on my armor, I've been sort of struggling with what to do for a helmet. Now, since I'm very sports related, I could do football helmet, baseball helmet, you know, a beer helmet, uh, or, you know, whatever, basically. But because my town that I'm representing is also real heavy, uh, well, used to be real heavy in the steel industry and stuff, I thought maybe a construction hat. And uh, obviously, it's also sports related as well, so it fits the theme. Now, I just need to obviously mess this up. This is way too nice and shiny and new. So for this, all I'm gonna do is probably hit it with the wire wheel, hit some spray paint on it, maybe glue some stuff to it. It has places to attach a chin strap. Now, I had to take the inside part out because this was actually too small for my head, but that's okay. I'm gonna wear a hat underneath this and it'll just sort of sit on there and then I'll make a chin strap for it. But I'm thinking I might take some metal bands and run it over it and just really sort of, you know, do it up. And uh, I think that's what is gonna happen here. Um, when I made my Fallout helmet, I put a card in the side, a joker. I may do that for this just for fun. I may put like a foot, old football or an old baseball card in there, assuming I can find one. And uh, I think that might be a cool little extra touch. So that's the helmet. Still working on the armor. Just thought I'd, you know, toss this in there. Since I'm just coming into the game, I don't want to show up and have like, you know, the whole nine yards. I want to sort of build off of it and tell stories. And uh, every time I go, I plan to make little adjustments to the armor and costume until it just gets better and better and better. And maybe, you know, by the time you know, I get through a year, everything is spot on. Uh, the weapons will get upgraded and, and better and uh, so on and so forth. But, you know, that's sort of what we're looking for. Pro tip. If you're going to wear a hard plastic helmet, you better make sure it has breathing holes in it. Trust me, it's nothing better than running around all day and having a whole bunch of sweat build up inside your helmet. So, do yourself a favor. Take a minute. Drill some holes in the top of it. We're not really going to war here, okay? It doesn't matter if it's compromised a little bit. If you're doing historical reenactment or something, well, you deal with it. Um, for something like this, for LARP, drill some damn holes in your helmet. Trust me, your head will breathe. You'll feel a lot better. Raindrops aren't going to get in here, but if you're really concerned, drill them along the side, conceal them and hide them. Even my pirate hat that I wear, I drilled holes in the side of it so that my head could breathe. So definitely do that. If not, all kinds of sweat will build up in here. It gets super nasty, your head gets super hot, it gets super wet, and it's just funky. If you do this, everything stays nice and cool and breezy and uh, really makes the experience a lot more comfortable. So I got this awesome piece of fabric that I'm working on making into a cloak for my Dystopia Rising character and uh, it just, it looks too good. So what I'm going to do is I have some brown dye. I'm going to go ahead and take this and I'm going to cut the end of it here, which is nice and straight, and make it really, really jagged, like it's ripped up. And we'll take, I'm gonna dip that in the brown dye. And there's a couple other shirts and stuff I have laying around. I'm gonna probably hit them with the brown dye also, and then go ahead and run them through the wash. This way it should look like this has been getting drugged through the dirt and mud. Plus the way this hangs right now, 
it hangs below my calf, so it hangs pretty low. I'd prefer for it to hang a little bit higher than that. So all I'm going to do is just take some scissors, cut this jagged, and then dip it in there. So nothing too exciting, but it'll make the piece look much better. And then hopefully when I run through the wash, everything gets kind of browned up a bit. And then what I may also do is put some bleach and water in a spray bottle, like I've done with some other items, and spray the top of this. So, you know, some of it will look faded, other parts will look dyed, and, uh, you know, it'll look beat up, basically. So I'm going to leave the actual edges intact. I'm going to start cutting this, you know, just right in here. And as much as I don't really want this to be uniform in nature, I'm going to fold it over and cut it because it should make it easier for me. Now it's all kind of ripped up on the bottom. So, and if it tears and like rips up further than that, that's fine. What I'll do is I'll probably try to run a line of stitches through there so it doesn't shred too much further. But, uh, yeah, I think that looks pretty good. I think I'm okay with that. <clears throat> so, let's go ahead and dye it. When it comes to dyeing clothes, and you get your bottle of dye, there's like all these words and shit on the back, and uh, I'm just not, you know, really into that. So, I'm just gonna open this up. I got some hot water. I'm gonna pour some of this in. Okay. So that looks pretty dark, right? Don't get this stuff on your hands. Luckily, I'm professional. Once you have it in your bucket, go ahead and uh, you know, sploosh it around. Sploosh, ladies. Uh, once again, don't get any on you, which I did not. Now I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna take the end where I cut all the raggedy bits, and we're just gonna dip it on in. Now this is a dark brown. Now I don't necessarily want it to you know, like really over dye this, but I want it to look like you know it's been in the mud. So I'm gonna leave the top part sort of up here and if this has sort of a wicking effect and it sucks some of it up higher that's fine, but mostly I just want this bottom part looking real dirty. Now on this top part, I'm going to take and hit with some bleach and stuff probably, put some bloody handprints on it, some spray paint and some things, but this is how we're going to dye this bottom part. I'm just going to toss this on here so nothing gets in it. And uh, like I said, I don't really know what the instructions said, and I don't really care. I'm gonna let this sit for like an hour or whatever overnight if I forget about it. Now I'll come down here, throw it in the washer, you know, wash it with uh, no detergent, see what it looks like. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, <laughs> done. While I'm at it though, I got these pants I've been working on and I'm gonna do the same thing on them. I'm gonna uh, take and just dip the bottoms on in here. Just see what happens. Okay, so I've let this soak for a while. We're going to pop it open and see what it looks like here. And the bottoms definitely look brown. And that's great because that's really sort of what we were going for. So throw these in the washer, run them through, see what it looks like when it's all done. And now comes my most difficult part of this process and that's choosing which Nerf gun to take. And this is only 
a quarter of the Nerf guns that I own. These are the ones that I haven't painted yet, basically. <sighs> decisions, decisions. And so this is a little bit better breakdown of my overall costume. So I have baseball gloves here. They're nice and grippy on the inside. Just genre them up a little bit. I got my bat that I made, 412, which is the area code. I made this holder just out of an old belt and uh, some Velcro. Of course, I got my terrible towel, my belt. I have my lunchbox, which is also my holster for my gun. I have this sheath that I made just real quick for my combat knife. I have my awesome helmet, which was a Steelers themed construction helmet. I added a 12 gauge mohawk to it, some stuff, padded the inside, put some Velcro on it to hold it on my head. Of course, genre it up. Here's the armor. Started out as football pads. We got that license plate on the shoulder. We got the cowboy collar. I added this half a football to this side. I added a chain later just because, I don't know, I thought it looked cool. Uh, got my jersey. It's all jacked up. Like I said, I couldn't lighten this at all, so I added to it. I got my, my flowing cape. That is dirty as shit. But if I decide to remove my cape, the back of the jersey is also good to go. But I think I'm going to try to leave that cape on there as much as I can. But that's pretty much the costume. Doesn't look like a lot, but there was a lot of time involved and uh, a lot of time getting the look right. So, hope you enjoyed having a look at the costume. Uh, the weapon, like I said, when I made it, it's it's whatever. It's good enough for this time. I'll probably do something else next time. Of course, my sly combat knife from Kalamazoo, which I love. And uh, everything fits and works real good. I also have my leg guards here, license plate on some generic pads and of course my pants which I uh, <laughs> genred up a little bit once again I got my area code on the leg bunch of marks on it got my boots some steel remnants on it lots of dirt you know but couldn't jack them up too bad because I need them to stay waterproof but that's pretty much it I hope you enjoyed this video. hope you enjoyed my costume. And if you ever get a chance to check out Dystopia Rising, do it. If you like this video, please click subscribe, click like, share with your friends. Uh, please just, uh, you know, let everyone know that my channel is out there. I appreciate it. And until next time, adventure on. I'm Max Sterling, and this is my channel. I work here with my old man and my son, Big Hoss. Everything in here has a story and a price. One thing I've learned after 21 years is that you never know what is going to come through that door.